This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. Whoa! And Danica Patrick is involved with Morgan Shepard. We're good here. Caution is out. We'll come off the wall there and just watch that one sit down there to your right. See if there's any damage on the left side of the car. Nothing apparent on the right side. Maybe just a little fender. Up in Tony Jr. It was a battle around. for 28 okay. left at that point. She's yeah, got they, left front damage. They totally took me out. Yeah, they got a little work to do in the pits here, but they'll get her back out. See, as they get down into turn one here, this is a place, and Morgan Shepard just literally got loose getting in there, and that's one thing, it's your responsibility to that driver on the inside not to let that happen. You know you, there's no banking to lean on, and this will happen more than once today. To race leader Kyle Busch, and once that happens, that will put us down to 12 cars on the lead lap. That gives you an idea just how good Kyle uh -oh, is right got now. A caution the caution here, is out. Trouble, the 6 of Ricky Stenhouse and the 10 of Taylor Malsom. Uh, right side, pretty heavy, Shane. He was ninth place for Ricky Stenhouse. It involved, well, it's just the tail end of it. Can't tell who actually caused it, but it's the 10th crash for Stenhouse in 14 starts here in, back here at New Hampshire. We are under our third caution now. As you can see, everybody at Pit Road has opened already, and the race leaders, Mike Bliss, uh, has an engine problem. Don't know exactly what the issue was. That is what uh, the team is working on with Mike Bliss, as our old late friend Benny Parsons would have said. He blowed up. Yep. What it looks like here, you see. Yeah, but Bliss kept saying he felt like he had oil pressure, didn't know exactly what it was, but he's in there trying to diagnose it. It's over at lap 175, but we're going to lap 200. Now we've got a caution flag out. You can see the results of what's happened to Mark Green. He was running 33rd. It was a long day, and it just got a lot longer. Yeah, by looking at this car, I would say that he went in the corner and didn't have any air in that right front tire. See right there, man, that is a hard lick. Flatten the right side of that thing. So, as I said, uh, actually, I should correct myself, it's our fourth caution. The fewest cautions we've ever had here is three. Best battle we have going in the top ten right now. You can see how close they are. Both of them are about eight-tenths of a second behind Brad Keselowski. There you see the gap between first, second, and then third and fourth. And now we have eight laps to go. Can Kyle Busch become the first repeat winner in 24 races at New Hampshire? Or does Brad Keselowski find something to keep that streak alive? Well, he's been actually just barely beating Kyle Busch. I mean, a couple of hundredths of a second a lap uh, for four or five, six laps in a row. And he's looking, he's trying to make a little ground here. Two of Brad's three wins in 2010 where last lap passes. Let's get more from Dave Byrne. And Marty, if you talk to Jason Ratcliffe about why the 18 has been so successful, he says it's the evaluation of our program. We have a clear understanding of what works and what doesn't, and we're very seldom lost. And one more thing, they watch tape. Imagine a Joe Gibbs team watching tape to get better, and Jason Ratcliffe did that again this week as he pre prepared for New Hampshire to try to see if he could break the streak of different winners. That's a really good way to try to refresh yourself. You know, you go to so many racetracks during the year, sometimes you kind of forget how, what problems you had at, say, at, at a New Hampshire last year. Best thing to do, look at those tapes, and it all comes back to you, and then you can be better prepared when you get here. How about the latest from the 22 camp, Vince? Well, the spotter, uh, Joey Meyer, has come on the radio to Brad Keselowski, and he's told him the lap times the last couple of laps. Brad's been just a little bit quicker than Kyle, and he says he's getting bigger in your mirror or in your window. I know he is as Keselowski starts to close the gap. Remember at the beginning during the uh, countdown show, we talked with crew chief Paul Wolf, who used to race here as a driver, and now he's Brad Keselowski's crew chief, and the things that they have done as a crew chief that he feels maybe gives them a little bit of an advantage because of his racing history. They just came on the radio a few moments ago, said, perfect corner, Brad. And that's exactly the kind of things that Paul Wolf has been helping Brad Keselowski with in this transition here at New Hampshire. This time by, four laps remaining. Brad Keselowski, if he has anything left, has got to find it. It is a seven-tenth of a second lead. He's putting everything on the line, and so is Kyle Busch. They ran identical lap times last time by. Yeah, it could possibly take a caution right here to... 
jam things up again and make it interesting. Now, I thought on that last restart, that was going to be Joey Logano's opportunity was to maybe keep Kyle from, from winning this race, was to get out front then. I thought he tried a little too hard when he spun his tires. One of the guys we thought could be in the hunt for the first repeat winner trophy would have been that guy right there, the 33 of Kevin Harvick. But right now, he's got his hands full with Justin Allgaier, and that's a battle for sixth. Well, Harvick's now made his way back. His car just will not go on the cold tires. Once they cool down here, and even with the air pressure, up, when you're riding around under caution, those air pressures go down some, and that's just not what Kevin's car and, and what he likes, so it takes him time to get back on. Meanwhile, back up front, as you see the view from outside those two, here comes, with now two laps remaining, the gap is eight-tenths of a second, so I guess uh, Kyle said it's time to pick up the pace a little bit because he just put another tenth of a second gap on second place, Brad Keselowski. Edwards and Logano, they are separated literally by a bumper. Joey Logano is going to be disappointed with this race because he really had, I thought he had a shot at Kyle Busch. And, you know, that restart, just uh, that one little mistake is going to keep taking him away from a chance to win. White flag now out for our race leader, Joey Logano, trying to salvage at least third place for the team. But right now, it's all about his teammate, Kyle Busch. He's already set one record today, leading a career-high lap total, passing Mark Martin down into turn number three for the final time. There's nothing in doubt right now as long as nothing happens. Coming out of turn number four with his sixth win the win and the first repeat winner at New Hampshire. It's and you are the all-time lap leader in the Nationwide Series. Good job, brother. I appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very, very much. Brad Keselowski second, Carl Edwards third, Joey Logano fourth, Trevor Bain with a great run, a new career best for him in fifth. Then it's Allgaier, Harvick, Sorensen, Menard, and Brendan gone. Rounding out the better. top ten. Dave, it's all yours. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.